Right, so what I've got now, I've got a back pressure gauge up top. And as you can see, I've got it just on the pipe before the DPF. And that's the differential pressure sensor. This is the pipe I've just took off. That's the, so that's after and that's before. So now we're going to measure the back pressure. Now, you would expect that to sort of be around here if there was, if there was back pressure. It would shoot up to about that amount. But as I'm thinking, it probably won't. It'll stay around that amount there because there is no back pressure problems, essentially. Right, so this particular job, this particular job's come to me now with a DPF problem. It won't regenerate. And it's saying that the DPF sup mass, even though it's low, it's saying it's too high. Now, I've checked the back pressure. It's saying the back pressure's too high as well. Now, I've checked the back pressure. I checked it with my manometer and there's nothing wrong with it. So basically, there's an issue, isn't there? There's an issue with the, actually the differential pressure sensor and there's an issue with a few temperature sensors on the engine, which is one of the reasons why it thinks it's got a blocked DPF. But it hasn't got blocked DPF and I'm going to show you that now on the manometer. What it is, is something a bit more disturbing and a little bit disgraceful, should we say. And now I'm going to turn my head into a police detective and I'm going to stop fault finding and I'm going to now start doing detective work, which I'm going to take you all through. Last week I checked something on this engine, which is a common fault and it was quite okay. But in the past, they've changed this particular part and they've tried to hide and mask a fault. Person's bought the car and here we are. So I'm going to walk you through it. Stay tuned, it's going to be a good video of this. So essentially on this B37 unit we've got issue with this temperature sensor here it's showing that's 300 degrees and when I unplug it it's minus 40 which is fantastic so we know everything's okay differential pressure is reading sort of 6 millibar and it should be zero when I on the old one which is here still on the car when I plug the new one and it goes to zero so obviously there's a, there's a fault with that sensor I've also got a problem with the pressure sensor, which is down there as well. So we've got three sensors on the emission system fault, you know. On the B37, what usually goes wrong, and it's not really an unusual fault, is usually the temperature sensor for the fuel system, which is here, there's a little temperature sensor. It's a pile of crap and it goes faulty. Now, the first thing I did last week was I actually took the plug off and I looked and it's usually full of diesel when they're faulty. Well, as you can see, it's absolutely bone dry. Just zoom in, as you can see there, it's bone dry really, it's a bit blurred, but you get the idea, it's bone dry that sensor. Now, what I can do now is, if I suspect this, because I don't know, the woman's just bought the vehicle from a large place, no one knows the history of the vehicle, it's had one service, we can look at the part number of the sensor, and I'm going to do that right now and see if it's a new sensor. Or an old one now sometimes they don't change part numbers so you don't get anything from that detective wise to cut a long story short what i'm gonna have to do with this engine is unfortunately i'm gonna have to now fit these parts and not plug them in because they need replacing anyway so i'm going to change the temp sensor in this and then i'm now gonna have to do some detective work but i've already done a bit of detective work and let me show you what detective work i've done now it's easy to miss these signs and don't forget if someone's on the car and traded in they just want to get it kind of into the dealership and then walk away with the money kind of thing well unfortunately as i've took a second look on this particular car i don't know if you can make it out in the camera you can just make out a touch of shiny liquid that's diesel is that i've already smelled it so then i started to think okay we need to start looking elsewhere on this vehicle again now this has turned from a diagnostic job into a police detective job as it so often does in my case unfortunately and again we look inside there and we can just about see at some point you can just see it's shiny there you can just see some diesel there on the right side of that image some diesel it's definitely leaked diesel and there's little signs you can see like for example the dye on that red plug is started to come off we've got one here as well there's another temp sensor Oh, look, lo and behold, it's diesel, isn't it? Whew. Despite all the advanced diagnostic tools, sniffing the old connectors of the DDE is basically the best way. They've cleaned it extremely well. However, the large connector can't smell out. The small one, however, you can smell diesel, definitely. Now I'll get the little, uh, I'll get my camera over the DDE, sort of. ECU part of it and we'll see if we can see anything.
Right, nothing much in there, they've done a good job of cleaning it, haven't they? Let's look at the swirl. Flat plug. Full of diesel. You see it's wet there with diesel. You see that's diesel, isn't it? Let's do a sniff test of that again. Diesel, definitely. Mm -hmm. 